Hey everybody, Adrian here with the Northwoods Family Channel. Thanks for joining us, thanks for coming back. Today, I have a long-awaited video. I know people have been asking for this one for a long time, and that is an updated review on the Garmin Tread. Now, I picked up this Garmin Tread, oh geez, I don't know, probably six, eight months ago, last spring when it first came out, and I did kind of a, an initial unboxing or mini review of it, talking about the installation and things like that, so you can go back and take a look at that if you're interested in those type of things. But since then, a lot of people have been asking me for an updated review on this. And I've, I've held off. I've held off for a couple reasons. One, because I wanted to make sure I really had some time on it. And two, because initially I wasn't real impressed by it. Uh, there were some quirks, there were some bugs, there were some user interface issues with the software that was just, just did not make it very user friendly. And when I'm going to give a review on something that I don't think is meeting my expectations, I really want to make sure that I give it a really good fair shake, right? So that said, I have tried to do this review several times over the last uh, few months, tried to update it, but Garmin keeps releasing software updates, which is fantastic. And I'll tell you what, the review that I'm going to give you today looks a lot differently than the review I would have given you last month or a few weeks ago even. Through software updates, Garmin has fixed a lot of the problems. In fact, I would say the, the biggest, the most major problems that I had with this unit over the first you know four to six months of my using it. So I really have to give them credit for that. I kind of recorded this first review and I was gonna be pretty critical about it. I was kind of disappointed in it, but I have to say with the latest software update now, I'm pretty excited to get it back out there and use it some more on our, uh, on our rides. So anyways, this will probably be a review that I'll update again uh, in a few more months after we have some more time with it, but I'll talk to you a little bit about it now and where it's at. For what it's worth, I saw that Garmin just released last month a couple new models. It looks like maybe they updated this a little bit and uh, not just the software, but the physical unit too, some of the specs on it. And then they've also released a overlanding series of treads that come with an eight inch and a 10 inch screen. So I was kind of interested in those as well, but it sounds like the actual software between the, the units is the same from what I can tell on their website. Um, it's just the screen size that is different. Um, I, I would love to try them out. The eight inch, I wanna say is about $1,200 though, and the, the 10 inch is like 14 or $1,500. So they're pretty pricey. This was an $800 unit that did come with the, uh, the radio communications too. There is a, an add-on accessory you can put on it, which is called Garmin Power Switch, which allows you through Bluetooth to wirelessly control lights and other accessories and things like that. I do not have that system. I just didn't need it. And for another four or $500, it, it wasn't something I was willing to try out just for the sake of this review, sorry. I do have one of the uh, cameras, one of the backup cameras that is wirelessly uh, connected to my unit and that's worked really good. I've been real happy with that. We're gonna go through some of the features, talk a little bit more about the tread here. We'll uh, update this review, as I said, as we go on, but this is gonna be the six, uh, as I said, six to eight month, 2,000 to 3,000 mile updated review on the Garmin tread, so stick around. All right, so first things first, looking at the unit, it's got a five and a half inch touch screen. Um, obviously, I have it removed from the mounting system on my UTV. If you wanna see how that all installs, it's pretty simple, but you can go back, check my original video. I'm not gonna go into that right now. Uh, on the back, it's got a power button, it's got a speaker. It has a port here to add a uh, micro memory card, so this is what you can use to load maps on. And then it has a USB mini B plug. One criticism I still have, it looks like they may have updated this for the newer versions because on their website it says the newer versions uh, looks like they have a USB-C. I don't understand why Garmin put a mini B port on this. These plugs are basically obsolete and it's really hard to find uh, matching cords. I can tell you we did have this unit crash once while we were on our Black Hills overlanding adventure and basically what happened is it crashed and the screen was so dark, the boot up screen, that it looked to me, especially when we were outside, like it wasn't getting power. So one of the things I tried doing is I, I didn't have one of these cords along, didn't think I'd need it, 
So I had stopped at gas stations, dollar stores, all sorts of places, and nobody sold these USB Mini B plugs anymore. So they're just really hard to come by. People watching their Garmin is not turning on. Garmin Tread. So we like to use all of our two, two electronic nav plus our paper and maps have been extremely helpful to have that redundancy. A little bit more about the unit when it crashed. Not sure what happened with it. Again, I'm assuming it was some type of software glitch. So hopefully that is something that has been fixed too with the latest software updates. It was pretty frustrating while we were out there. You know, we were using this for navigation and really relying on it heavily. We lost all of our recorded tracks for our trip. Thankfully, we also had the ride command going in our machine so that stored all of our trip information, but otherwise we would have completely lost all of our trip information, all of the routes we took over the first uh, four or five days of our trip, which would have been extremely frustrating. As it was, it was very frustrating and I, and I spent a good deal of time, probably you know a good couple hours messing around with it at different points during our ride, trying to get it working again. Eventually I was able to reboot it by connecting it to the Garmin tread app on my phone but uh, again it was it was a pretty major pain so I was definitely disappointed with that hopefully that's something that they fixed in the software updates as well so we have the unit all powered up here this is your home screen this is what's going to pop up as soon as you power up the unit there's a bunch of different uh, locations you can go to so first things first one of the bugs that Garmin seems to have fixed with the software update is before when I had the unit disconnected and I had it powering up or charging like this, say you want to bring it inside to plot out some routes for uh, your ride tomorrow, the touchscreen wouldn't work when it was plugged in. Garmin seems to have fixed that. I haven't been having any problems with the touch touchscreen when it's plugged in, so kudos to Garmin on that. Again, five and a half inch screen, uh, it's super bright during the daytime. I think they say the battery life when it's disconnected from the machine is only about an hour with the super bright uh, settings and it's something like four to six hours at 50% brightness. So just be aware, it's gotta have a really bright screen because you're gonna be using it outside. So I don't sweat the battery life too much. When it's on your machine, it's gonna be plugged in anyways. The Garmin comes preloaded with a bunch of different maps. It comes with uh, basic street maps of the United States but it also comes with motor vehicle use maps from the National Forest Service. And if you have watched our series on the Black Hills National Forest overlanding adventure, you will know how much I love the motor vehicle use maps. So we use paper maps in conjunction with the Garmin Tread and the Polaris Ride Command System. And these maps on the tread matching up in real time, us being able to see where we were all the time with the GPS and then being able to compare that to our, uh, our paper maps was just absolutely invaluable. So we see, I'm gonna scroll in here into the Black Hills. Another thing uh, that Garmin did with their latest update is they color coded some of these maps now and they are just super easy to read. Super cool because, so if I scroll into the National Forest here, it will tell me all the different things about some of these roads and these trails. So I'm just gonna click on it here. So that one, that gives me the forest road number. Um, it says my vehicle is not supported side by side over 50 inches in width. I'd have to look at these, I might not, uh, because I just did the software update, I might need to update my vehicle profile, but it will tell you all these different types of routes. So here, there's a snow route, so it looks like a snowmobile trail. Um, let's see, where do we have some other ATV trails? Let's see, what's that? Special vehicle designation. So side by side, so I, you know, I think, uh, I, yeah, my current vehicle is supported, interesting on this one, side by side, greater than 50 inches and with open year round. So this is all information right off the motor vehicle use maps. I absolutely love riding in the National Forest, uh, just such a great resource. And this was just, again, invaluable while we were out there in the Black Hills. What Garmin, what the Garmin maps did not have is local and like state trails. So here in Wisconsin, we have uh, an off-road trail just to the south of us called the Cheese Country Trail, go figure. That was not 
on the Garmin maps, um, some of the state trails up by the Black River Falls area, which are very popular in the state of Wisconsin, were not on um, those maps. So understand, you know, I was a little critical of it at first, but at the same time, I realized, you know what, Garmin is shipping this uh, unit all over the world, so it's probably just impossible for them to keep up and have all of those off-road trails listed and mapped. So. Basically, if you're looking for those kind of trails, you're going to have to expect that you're probably going to have to buy some of your own maps or find some of your own maps and load those into the system, which is easy to do. And that's what I did here. This is a map of Wisconsin from vvmapping.com and it has all of our trails and all of our routes in the state on here too. So that's the primary map that I use. If we go into settings, we can go into our map display. Or my maps, that's what I'm looking for. So we can look at what maps we have loaded here. So before the last software update, I had issues where I couldn't run my VV map while having all these other maps loaded. It appears now that uh, they're working together pretty good. So that's pretty sweet. Something here, bird's eye satellite imagery. I'm going to click on that. We'll go back here to the map. And I'll show you what this does. You can go and you can download uh, satellite imagery maps for areas you're gonna be riding in, and I believe you can download them in different definitions. It's been a while since I've done this, but you can see now I get landowner, parcel data, and things like that. I can tell the difference between public and private land. So this here, state of Wisconsin, this is behind my house here. Um, so there I am, there's our property. So that's pretty cool too. I haven't used it a lot. You know, honestly, I don't need the high resolution satellite imagery a lot where I'm riding, but it might be something you're interested in. You can set your vehicle profile, so that will then work with the maps to tell you, on, on most of the maps, to tell you, you know, what trails you can ride on. Obviously, you can change your uh, map display preferences. There's all sorts of features you can do. Navigation um, uh, preferences, you can do turn by turn, you can do straight line, uh, shorter distances. I usually like turn by turn. That's what I really got this thing for. There's a group ride feature. I don't have anyone else who has um, this unit. I believe what I saw in one of their videos is that even if uh, people have a, um, a radio that works on the same frequency, the G GMRS or whatever radio, that uh, you can actually track them on here. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how that works. I haven't had a chance to play with it. Just not something um, that I use a whole lot because most of my friends who we ride with just don't have radios. Uh, there's a pitch and roll calculator. I've used this a couple times, just more for, you know, giggles to see uh, how much my unit is rolling. There's an altitude uh, altimeter, barometer, and a compass, so that can come in handy sometimes. Kind of neat seeing what your elevation is, of course. Track recorder, so I can, you know, record all my trip data. Uh, it takes a lot of good information, time moving, time stop, max speed, average speed, things like that. So that's neat as well search function so you can find waypoints if you save waypoints or things like that on your map kind of neat um, it does connect uh, there's a, a history thing so it'll pop up points of interest on your map we saw a few of these in the black hills which was kind of neat it connects to the iOverlander app i haven't had a chance to use that a whole lot um, there's some national park stuff there's a whole bunch of things, features that I haven't had an opportunity to play with uh, quite yet. So this is the route planner tool. And this was one of the major reasons I wanted to get this unit because I wanted to be able to plot waypoints, get turn-by-turn -turn directions on roads and off-road trails so I could get behind the wheel and just drive. And I wouldn't have to be stopping to look at signs and paper maps and figuring out which way I need to turn every five or 10 minutes. So we go into Route Planner and we go Create Route. Now there are two things that Garmin did that f they fixed from the, the original software. And that was one, the original software only lets you scroll in so far on the map. This lets you scroll in super close, so when you got big fat fingers like mine, it's a lot easier to select you know, a road versus a trail when they're close together and actually pinpoint where you're trying to go. So kudos to Garmin on that. The interface is so much easier too. Before when I wanted to just click on the map and plot my routes, which is how most people are going to be plotting routes, um, I had to go through this like kind of long drawn out menu on a different screen. I had to scroll down, click that I wanted to click on the map, add that waypoint, go back to that menu, scroll down again, click that I wanted to add it. And then as I was adding waypoints on the map, 
they wouldn't show up. So if I was scrolling around and I lost my place, I would have no idea where my way, existing waypoints were. So Garmin fixed that, which is pretty cool. They've made it a lot more intuitive. Uh, that was probably one of my biggest criticisms about this unit when it first came out. So now it's so easy, I just point and click. So turn by turn directions there. All right, we're just gonna go up Dugway. There we go. That's my fat fingers there hitting that. Boom. So you can see how easy this is now. I'm just scrolling through. I'm just finding, you know, next points where I want to turn or next waypoints. So the one thing you just have to watch is just make sure that <clears throat> when you hit it, it, uh, you know, plots onto the road you want to go, that it follows the contour of the road. Sometimes I've noticed it'll want to give you a straight line, especially if you're giving, you know, too far between your waypoints. There you go, it's looking good. So I am plotting, I mean, this is gonna be like a, you know, 20 mile route here that I've just plotted in, you know, just a matter of a minute or so. I can save, I can save my route, and then I can go. So there it is, there it's laid out all of my waypoints that I clicked on the map, and it's gonna give me turn by turn directions, which is pretty Please cool. Please drive to highlighted route. So the other thing in route planning is what I have done is I have created a whole bunch of routes on Garmin Basecamp that I then transferred over to the Garmin Tread. So Garmin Basecamp is a GPS mapping uh, software. It's free. You can download it from Garmin's website and it allows you on your computer to, you can load your own maps, you can use the Garmin maps, but allows you to plot routes, points of interest, and things like that. So what I did here is I plotted an entire, it's about a 650 mile trip that we're planning on doing in spring from our house, or basically the southern border of Wisconsin, all the way up to Lake Superior. So I, I did that in the Garmin base camp, transferred it over, and again, with the old software, before the latest software update, the routes got all messed up, they were all screwed up, it was routing me different directions, it wasn't following my waypoints. But now, the routes are looking really good. Basically, I started at the uh, campground there and then plotted it on off-road trails. So before, what the tread was wanting to do is wanting to take me on all these crazy roads, okay? But now it's following my waypoints really good. It's staying on the uh, off-road trails, which is exactly what I wanted because we want to take as many off-road trails as we can during our trip. So look at that. So these are all, again, those state or local trails, and it's doing just a great job of keeping me on those trails uh, the way I wanted it. So pretty cool. Um, it's really neat now. It sh looks like it's working. Uh, it should be working good enough where I will be able to do our entire 650 mile trip, plot it on my computer, run all the way from the southern border of Wisconsin all the way up to Lake Superior up north um, and get turn by turn directions the entire way. So super cool. Again, I tell you what, a few weeks ago I wasn't real thrilled about this unit, but now that they fixed that and that seems to be working a lot better, um, man, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this Garmin Tread again. Well, there you have it. That is my review after six to eight months with the Garmin Tread, two to 3,000 miles on it. Overall, now that Garmin has finally gotten all the software updates, all the bugs out of the system, uh, I think it's a pretty cool unit. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, don't regret buying it at this point and now I would recommend it to other people. I can tell you that before I would not have. And it's unfortunate that, you know, I had to put up with six to eight months of aggravation with this unit. Uh, I would tell people before I have this love-hate relationship with the unit when it was working good, it was great, but it was buggy, the user interfaces were poor, and it, it just wasn't good to start. And that's unfortunate because really companies, especially a company like Garmin, uh, you should be putting out a good product right from the bat. And we shouldn't have to struggle with it for six to eight months before things finally get caught up and the product is the way that it should have been before its release. Unfortunately, I think that is very common these days, especially in the outdoor industry. Um, I've seen this with a lot of other products, especially electronic products, where 
things are not the way they should when they're first released just because there's such a rush to get them to market. So that's unfortunate. And at, at the end of the day, I think, you know, it hurts consumer confidence uh, in, in your products because now, you know, the lesson I learned from this is don't be the first one to buy something. Wait six months, wait a year and see how other people are doing. Um, see if the bugs and quirks like that get worked out before I drop my hard earned money on it. So at the end of the day, Garmin Tread, yes, finally, they've gotten it to the point where I can say it's a good product. I'm happy with it. I'm really excited to be using it uh, over this next year. Unfortunate that it took six to eight months to get to that point. All right, if you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments below. If you like this review, where's my thumb? Give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. <laughs> I have thick skin, I can take it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out some of our other videos. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.